Let me see if this works. All right, so uh, thank you to the Fed Federalist Society. I actually wrote my remarks because I'm a law professor and it's very hard to speak for less than five minutes. Uh, and I was, I was afraid that I would spend all five minutes on rebuttals. So I wanted to make sure I, I got my point out and, and I'll do rebuttals in the, in the Q&A. So um, I'm gonna talk about history a little bit and then also about uh, innovation. And I think the history is, is very important here as, as Kyle alluded. And I'm gonna go back to, to the dark ages. I don't know if you remember dial-up. And so if you had dial-up, you could dial-up any ISP. You could dial-up Earthlink or AOL or Net Zero. And you had a choice among different ISPs. And even if AT&T was your phone company, you didn't have to dial up the AT&T ISP. You could dial up any of them. You had competition. And if AOL or AT&T or your ISP was limiting your access on the internet, you could simply end your service and dial up another. It was the beauty of competition at work. And so as a result, you got the unfettered access on the internet that you wanted based on ISP competition. And it was actually a law that required Verizon and AT&T and SPC to permit that kind of access to all ISPs. And as Gigi mentioned, it was around 2002 to 2005 that those rules were sort of changed for a cable modem service and for DSL. And now the way it works, as I'm sure you know, is you know, if Verizon is your, your, you know, your phone company, that's the ISP you get to use. You can't dial up another. And if Comcast is your you know, cable company, that's the ISP you get to use. You have now two choices of ISPs, so far less competition as a result of those, of those decisions. And when those decisions were made, there was a fear that the phone and cable company could leverage their newfound market power in the ISP market into market power over applications and services. So on the same day that the FCC changed the regulations for DSL, eliminating independent ISPs, the FCC issued an internet policy statement, uh, which was you know, essentially the FCC saying, we will try to keep the internet open and free, even though we've eliminated ISP uh, access. And that was a unanimous policy statement. It was the middle position between ISP access and, and no regulation. Uh, the chairman, uh, Kevin Martin, a Republican, was in favor of the, of the policy statement. It was based on a speech by another Republican chairman, uh, uh, Michael Powell. And, and that was the sort of statement and if, essentially a promise from the FCC. And the middle position shifted fairly quickly. A few months later, AT&T made an announcement that, you know, AT&T CEO, that Vonage and Google were using his pipes for free and he should have control of them. Verizon made a similar comment. Uh, and this, you know, this, this didn't look like speculative harm, but then there are also some violations. A, a small company called Madison River, a phone company was blocked Vonage. Uh, and then also the second largest ISP in the nation, Comcast, was caught secretly blocking, after denying, uh, some of the most popular online technologies out there that are used for, um, they're, they're versatile technologies used by open source, uh, online TV distribution, government agencies. And so, you know, the solution found a problem. Second largest ISP, uh, major important uh, innovative technologies. And at the time, you know, 20,000 individuals filed complaints with the FCC, tech companies filed complaints, consumer groups filed complaints. And the collaborative internet bodies whose standards were being violated, they, they weren't able to do anything. It was the FCC that had to step in and issue an order, a bipartisan order, under a Republican chairman, uh, re uh, requiring Comcast to stop. And the NPRM on net neutrality that hopefully the, the FCC will turn into a you know, solid rule could ex essentially extend that order and make it a rule and provide more certainty. So, so that's the background. You know, to me, net neutrality has always been a middle ground that would pr preserve competition among applications and content. And so to talk about innovation, I think it's important to, to understand what could happen without net neutrality. And Gigi mentioned cable TV and broadcasting. And one, one way to think of what could happen without net neutrality is one giant app store. Right? Uh, the carriers would turn the internet into a giant app store. And if you created an application, you would have to go to each network and get your application approved for that network, Verizon, Comcast, AT&T, et cetera. 
uh, and you know, usually you have to give a cut of profits, negotiate some sort of uh, resolution. And, uh, and, that, and that would be the sort of model of the internet, which it, you know, it would be sort of like every appliance having to negotiate with the electricity company to get on the electrical grid to plug in. And rather than simply the best appliance winning in the market, you would have essentially rent seeking with companies having to try to lobby the electricity company for the best deal. And, and the Coase theorem, of course, you know, there are transaction costs, there are issues, it wouldn't work out perfectly. So the internet's history has been innovation without permission. You didn't need a permission slip from a cable company or a phone company to innovate. And so, you know, as it turns out, many of the most innovative applications that you use were very cheap and almost accidental. So eBay was a weekend project that became surprisingly popular, and then a billion dollar company where small businesses make you know, a lot of their living, uh, many of them do. Uh, Google was a research project to, to rank scholarly papers. Twitter was a side project that became huge. And a lot of these, and, and I'm glad Kyle you know, mentioned Google since they're huge net neutrality supporters, um, and a lot of these innovations couldn't have happened if these people would have had to you know, go get permission and sort of have a mother may I uh, approach to the internet. So let me explain for, for a moment how innovation doesn't happen. Uh, AT&T you know, invented cellular technology and then didn't deploy it for many years because they were afraid it would compete with their landline business. AT&T turned down the contract to build the original internet uh, for the same fear. Uh, AT&T, Verizon, and Comcast have not invented a, a great search engine, a great social networking site, microblogging, blogging, a lot of the software that you use the internet for. Um, they could, they're totally free to, to innovate in that way, but they haven't. Uh, and these large corporate bureaucracies have not been able to innovate nearly as well as an open and competitive uh, internet. So, um, so just in, in closing, and I look forward to, to the rebuttals, uh, you know, net neutrality to me has always been you know, the middle position. I think it's very important for the future of innovation in our nation. As Commissioner McDowell said, we use the internet as a sort of general purpose technology in everything we do, kind of like electricity, you know, from banking to speech. And, um, and it shouldn't be like cable TV. It shouldn't be like an app store. It should be like you know, uh, electricity and like the way the internet has always been. So thank you. Do you want to make a response? Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want me to go up the podium? Or yes, just, please. Is that, okay. Yeah, I know it's cumbersome, yeah. but they've told me that our, the there sound is working better. More cumbersome for Kyle, unfortunately. Oh goodness. I think we can give you a hall pass <laughs> next. For